Okay, so let's have a look at this. In this video, we are going to make multiple triangles. Now, remember in the previous video, I said that WebGPU, unfortunately, doesn't have push constants, so we can't set Dyna oh, we can't set a bunch of dynamic um, data while rendering, unfortunately, but we have something which is <clears throat> actually a little bit better, which is shader storage buffer objects. So what we can do is we can make a storage buffer, throw on a whole bunch of model transforms, and then read them off, send them all in one go, and then read them off as we run the shader. So what I'll do is we'll just take this in this way, we'll start with the shaders, open this up. Now, see at the moment, the model transform is within this transform data um, struct, of which we're only sending one. Let's get rid of that. So this won't be model view projection, it will just be view and projection. And I'm going to add another struct, which will basically just hold all of the what am I thinking? It will hold all of the transforms or the model transforms. So I'm just going to call this uh, model and that will be an array of, uh, what am I saying up above? Yeah, matrix four by fours, float 32. Okay, so that's my struct and I will declare one of those as well over here. So this will be binding number three in that group. And I'm just going to classify that this is a storage buffer and we're using it in read only mode. I'm going to call this objects. And that is an instance of um, that object data struct up above. So We'll have a whole bunch of uh, model transforms. We'll write them all in, in one go, send that over. Okay, the next challenge is, is how do we read that? So what we can do is, I'll just close that. I'll just go to this vertex shader and I'm going to declare a variable that I'll be using, basically the instance ID. So the way we declare this is it's one of the built-in, oops, built-in variables that um, web GPU has. Um, it's referring to the instance index. That's the reserved phrase which we have to use. I'm going to call it, just going to call it ID. And this is unsigned 32 bit integer. Okay. So now all we need to do is go over to um, this bit where we calculate the position. We can read the projection and view from the transform uniform buffer object. That's fine. Then we'll just grab, look into the index, uh, sorry, the objects, the model for this given ID, access that, there we have it. So let's say we have 10 triangles that we want to draw, what we'll do is the index, uh, instance index will start at zero, because when we draw, we'll specify the first index is zero, and then it will automatically keep incrementing. And when we make another draw call for another type of object, we can again, specify a new first index value, and that will keep incrementing. So in other words, yeah, we don't have to change anything else. So that's all well and good. The next step is I'm going to go to the renderer class and I'm going to set up a storage buffer to send over to the shader. So we can go to the renderer. Just go down below and I'll call this object buffer. The data type will be, oh, now it's working. I don't know what was going wrong the other day. IntelliSense wasn't working. Let's see how good it is now. So we're going to have an object buffer. Okay. And of course we need to create that. So that will be created in the, I wonder if this is, yes, it's working. Good. Okay. Oh, before when I minimize this initialize, it would 
minimize the whole class makes no sense. Anyway, uh, it's not in setup device. It's not in make pipeline. We'll get back to that. We'll create it here in this create assets. So what we'll do is we'll set up a buffer descriptor. And again, there's two things we need to specify really. Uh, that is the size. Now, a model matrix has 16 numbers, 16 floats, four by four. Each float is 64 bits, 64 bytes, I mean. So each model matrix will have 64 bytes of uh, storage. And let's just say we're gonna store 1,024 model matrices, give it a lot of space, that's fine. The other bit we need to specify is the usage. And there are two flags I'm gonna set. Oops, GPU buffer usage uh, storage, as well as um, copy destination, because we wanna copy data there. But yeah, so there we have it. That is our buffer. <laughs> buffer descriptor. All right, now let's go create that. So we'll go create the object buffer. We'll just go create buffer and we'll pass in the buffer descriptor. Okay, so that has been created. We will need to use that in make pipeline because we need to register it with the bind group to have the correct layout for the pipeline. So we can close that, go to make pipeline. And I just noticed we should probably specify for our uniform buffer that we're only storing two matrices in there. Okay. So then we'll go down below and we'll add another binding to our bind group layout. This will be binding number three, this will be used in the vertex stage. And it's not a sampler, it's a buffer. And we'll specify the type that is read only storage, and whether it has dynamic offset is uh, false. Okay, so there we have it. The bind group layout is defined, then we need to register the buffer in the bind group itself. Okay, pretty straightforward. So this just ensures that when we write to this object buffer, that will be parceled up with everything else and the GPU will have access to those resources. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to head over to this scene class and I'm just going to import mat4 because now the scene is going to need to know about four dimensional matrices. So we'll have triangles, which is a list of triangles. That's all well and good. I'm also going to make this object data, and that will be a float32 array. We're going to write the data to there for the model transforms. And just, this is a quality of life improvement. It's good to keep track of the triangle count. Let's just set this up. We'll go initialize the object data. So each model matrix will have 16 floats. We'll make 1,024 of those potentially. And we'll set the triangle count to zero. Then what we'll do is we'll loop through and create um, everything. So We'll just be looping through, creating a whole bunch of triangles at um, various different Y positions. So this will give us a full line of triangles. So we go ahead, we create the triangle and we push it on. And then 
this is a little strange and it's not it's not perfect it's not very elegant but i'll do it anyway we'll make <clears throat> a matrix and then push it element by element onto the object data array Yep, so this is just grabbing all of the um, components, all the elements of the matrix, and throwing them on one by one. All well and good. So then we'll just increment our counters. You might be saying, hey, wait a second. Why don't we just use this triangle count for everything instead of I? Well, if we had just triangles, that would be fine. But I want to future proof this a little bit because if I make other objects in future, I still want their model transforms to go on the same uh, buffer. So I'll just go with this for now. Okay, so this is fine. This has set up object data with a whole bunch of identity matrices, basically. What we'll need to do is then push all of the triangles matrices on there. So I'm just going to change this into an actual function or a, a bigger function. So I update the triangle and then I'll grab its transform. And then I'll loop through. Ah, let's let's make the counter again. So again, maybe not the most elegant code, but it works and that's a great that's that's a good start. So here we have it. We are yeah, grabbing all the model transforms and throwing them onto that that one big array. Now I'm just going to change this um, function down below so that instead of returning a list of triangles, it's going to return a float 30 uh, float 32 array I said so we have that there. That is all good, I hope. Now I'm going to modify the renderer's render function. So we'll pop back. We can close all of this, that's okay. And we'll just go down to render. And now I'm gonna say, okay, well, I expect a float32 array, which is actually the model transforms of all the triangles. And I'm also going to expect a triangle count, a sum number, because that'll just make things better. Okay, so where are we? We go perspective, that's fine. We calculate the view transform. Now, the view is now at an offset of zero and perspective is at an offset of 64 because we've gotten rid of those other transforms. And I also want to write the, the model data. So I'll go write buffer, and then we have the buffer that we're writing to, which is um, the object buffer. And then the buffer offset is zero. I'm just gonna write from the beginning. Okay. Um, and then the buffer source will be the triangles. That is the, the float32 array, which was passed in for the function. Data offset, zero we're going to start writing from the beginning of the triangles data size will be the number of um, the number of numbers that we're writing the number of floats and we can get that if we go triangles length so there we have it in theory all the model transforms should be now available on the gpu ready to use so all good we can go down down, 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 and get rid of well, that for starters. But then this doesn't have to be a loop. In fact, it should definitely not be a loop. And we don't need this. Okay, so what are we doing? We're setting the bind group. 
So this is just attaching all of the resources that we wrote previously, the uniform buffer objects and all of that. Now we draw, the first thing is the, there we go, the vertex count, and then here the instance count. Now the instance, instance count is a number of times we want this draw to be performed, and that will be the triangle count. Okay, then we have the first vertex, which is zero, we want to start from the beginning, and then the first instance is zero. So that should actually be completely fine now. Oh, except of course, except of course we need to send the correct data in the draw call. So we'll just go back to the app and yep, it's throwing an error. That's okay, we expect that. Back to the run. Okay, so we just need to pass in the triangle count and we'll get that, we'll go this scene triangle count and then it should be fine. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Okay, <clears throat> moment of truth. And there we have it. We have a whole bunch of, a whole line of triangles. Looks very nice. Le Chat Noir. Now, um, you will notice that I made a line of triangles, not a grid of triangles, and there's a reason for that. If we pop around, it looked okay from the other, whoops, from the other angle, but these triangles are overlapping each other. And that comes down to depth testing. So currently they are just being drawn in the order that the data was defined and we want depth testing to work. So the topic of the next video will be depth testing. But anyway, I'm pretty happy. We've got a whole bunch of triangles with their own data and we did it in an efficient way. So yeah, it's very nice. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, all the best, have a good one. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.